see that's all right but let's let's give the lord right, christ God. jesus a hand clap of praise hallelujah the king the king of kings the lord of lord i like to add he's also the son of sons I just like to give um, honor to our leaders, Apostle Gay and Dr. Sandra, to all the uh, senior associate pastors, the elders, the mothers, the deacons, and everyone in their respective places. I bring you greetings on behalf of the kingdom. Um, have a word for you today. Now I can't I can't can't take credit for the word. I, you know it's God's word. I'm just I'm just expounding on it. So, just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. I uh, um, want to also give a shout out to our sponsors, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to say hello to everyone that's online, that's watching. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and share. Tag someone. Um, send this message to them. I believe it'll it'll bring a blessing to them today. All right. So I'll go ahead and say a quick word of prayer, and then we'll uh, we'll get into the word, Father. We thank you for this opportunity that we get to come, uh, to gather in your name, to lift you up, to magnify you, to praise you, to worship you, all of those good things, Father. But we're here uh, for you. And Father, I just ask right now, uh, Holy Spirit, that you would come in and you would speak through me um, and that you would communicate what you want to communicate through this word. Father, let it fall on um, further ground. Um, Father, let it be a, a word that would change. Let it, let it even prick hearts. But Father, most of all, let it bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so I'm coming from a familiar passage of scriptures. Um, let me see which two. I think it was two scriptures that I took my, um, my thought or my text from. Let's see. And it's in, I'm coming from Luke uh, 15. There's three, three parables in there. And um, I'll hone in on the, the third one. Um, we, we hear it called the, um, the parable of the prodigal son, parable of the lost son. Uh, so it's a couple of different ways that you might um, have heard it. I'm hoping today that the way um, I present it, that it would be something different. To me, I felt like it was something different that I hadn't heard because I've heard the message a lot. Um, but it's just, it just really ministered, me, it ministered to me in a um, different kind of way. And how many know when you're bringing the word that you got to be a first partaker of the word that you're bringing? So I've been partaking on this word of uh, probably three months or so. Um, you know what? I'm going to give my text thought and then when I, when I get to those scriptures, then I'll highlight them. Because I want to just go ahead and um, get into it for the sake of time. Uh, so, uh, of course, I'm coming from Luke 15. And then uh, we'll peruse through 11 through uh, 32. And we, we're just going to unpack it and see what the Lord is, is going to say. And then the text of thought um, that I leave with you today is still your father's child. Now, just a quick uh, background on where these three parables are um, originating or why Jesus decided to um, say these particular parables and even in the, the sequence that he said it. Um, in Luke 15, uh, verses 1 through 2, it says, Then drew, this King James Version, then drew unto him all the publicans and sinners uh, for to hear him. And verse 2 reads, And then the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. Now, I'd like to also read it in the NLT, which we don't have it back there. Um, but the NLT reads this way, The tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. How despicable. <laughs> so we, we have um, 
this scenario where the Pharisees and, uh, you know, the Sadducees also, they, they kept coming at Jesus. They just, they kept trying to poke away. Um, so they're coming at him once again. Um, in response, Jesus began to tell a few stories or these parables to teach them and to illustrate a point. The first one that he um, tells in the first part of um, Luke 15 is, is the parable of the lost coin. So he's, he's talking about, you know, in, in, the, in the terms that they would understand, and you got to think about also the people that was around him, he had tax collectors. So he was very masterful in the way that he presented the parables, because not only was he addressing the Pharisees, he was also addressing the people that were around him, and he would say something that would be familiar to them, so they would be able to get it at the same time. So that's why he was a master teacher. That's why we call him the rabbi. So he talked about the lost coin, and of course the tax collectors, they, they, they probably liked the lost coins, because they was tax collectors. They, they, they wanted to collect the money. And then the, the second one that he talked about was the parable of the lost sheep. So the sheep were very important then but because guess that they was tied to? They was tied to the money. So he talked about the money. Then he talked about the thing that made the money. And then the parable that um, we're going to talk about today is the parable about the lost son, which it really wasn't just about the son. It was about two sons, and it wasn't just about the two sons. It was about a father. Yeah. So look at your name and say, you're still your father's child. So we'll get, in, we'll get into these scriptures. And in Luke um, 15, verses 11 and 12, and we're just going to unpack it. And it's some, it's some cultural things, um, I think, that I need to, to highlight so you can kind of get a, a, a fuller picture of why Jesus was saying this, because this, this story, these parables, this was something in that day that they were used to. You know, I, I guess when, when we were coming up, what well, we had um, Aesop's fables. So it's, it's similar to that. This is something that in that culture, in that society, they would be able to relate to. So that's why he shared what he shared, because they would all be familiar with it. But of course, he's coming um, with a different perspective. He's coming with a kingdom view on it, but he's using something that they were familiar with on the earthly level to bring those two into collaboration so he could bring some, some revelation to those that he was around, the publicans and the sinners, but also to bring some revelation to the, the Pharisees, which was, you know, they was kind of boastful in, in, their, in their proficiency and their excellence. So he was trying to present a different viewpoint to them as well. In verse 11 reads, and he said, a certain man had two sons. Verse 12, it says, and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and divided them and, and divided and he divided unto them his living. So um, like I had mentioned earlier, Jesus is telling a story um, that they knew in that day, um, which was often the way that Jesus decided to teach because it is. It, He's, the scripture says, um, wise is the one that, that he wins souls. So he was very wise in the way that he went about winning, winning souls. So if you, um, if you think about this, this story, um, they, this story was familiar in the Jewish culture. And Luke, if you, if you know, know about Luke, Luke was a doctor. Now, most doctors, um, when, they, when they dictate or they know they, they are very specific with the things that they dictate. So when you look at the book of Luke, the things that he write down, that he writes down is not just on, per, on, on accident. There, there is an intent. It's, it's very, he's very meticulous. And the, and the details that he shares in there, when you look at Luke, you have to really think about what the text is saying. You have to think about what the text is inferring. And then you also have to read in between the lines is talk about what the text is not saying. So some of the stuff when I was doing my research on it, in that culture, in that day and time, in order uh, for a son to be able to um, ask or petition for his inheritance, which inheritance usually was given after the father had gone on or passed away. So I started thinking about that thing that, you know, I was first of all, I was thinking, what was going on with the son 
that he just decided, like, hey, uh, I, I want my inheritance. Um, can, you, can, you, can you give me what's due to me? I was wondering, like, what happened to him? And I kind of I thought about myself sometimes in life. You know, when you, some stuff you just, you just hey, I want it and I want it now. Okay. Not that you need it. And, and you might have right to it. And so I was thinking about, like, what came over him. And I have been thinking about um, what, what uh, Apostle had been teaching on about the new wine and the old wine. And I was like, it, it seemed like he got drunk on some old wine. It feel, it, it feel like he had become intoxicated. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like the, if it was, a, if it was a, a wine, you know, if we talk about the 52 Merlot, you know, that's a good, a good wine. I don't, I don't drink wine, but I just heard a 52 Merlot is a, is a good wine. But I think he had a... I think he had a bottle of that, that good old pride, <laughs> you know, some, some old pride that just had been sitting on the shelf, and he, he had done dusted it off a little bit and had been taking some shots. And he had become intoxicated because he had to understand that there was a protocol and certain things had to be in place in order for him to even become, to come and request to have his inheritance. Like, and the text doesn't indicate that the dad was ill, it, he, he did probably have some age on him, but it did not indicate that he was on his deathbed. It didn't indicate anything was wrong that his death was imminent. So for the son to have the, um, the unmitigated gall, I almost said something else, but to have the unmitigated gall to go to his dad and ask him for his inheritance while his dad was still alive is kind of like a slap in the face because it's almost like he was saying, you're dead to me. Wow. How many can relate how, we, 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 how we've been towards the father? Because this is still your father's child. I'm talking about the father in heaven. Um, Jesus said, don't call anyone in the earth your father because you have but one heavenly father that's, that's in heaven. So I'm talking about the father, how many times have we been that person? I've, I've been that person. I can, I can say that. You know, like, I'm, I'm just feeling how I'm feeling. I'm, on, I'm, good, I'm, I'm good and drunk on the old wine of pride. And, hey, you dead to me. But still, give me, give me what's due to me. So, and that's one, that's one thing, too, about this, this generation that they in. They, woo, they feel entitled. So you know this not something new. He was feeling entitled. And he, he felt so entitled that he could just, he could just step to his father and, 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 and approach him like that. So I was just thinking about that. He, he knew the protocol. He knew what needed to be in place. But it's like he had become so full of himself or intoxicated that he felt like when he went to his daddy, like he was, it was very reasonable. Or maybe he didn't feel it was reasonable, but he was just feeling himself. But he felt whatever he had going on with him, he felt like he you could actually approach the father new. like that. He was feeling entitled. Now, he, this he a father that we just, we have. He could just uh, to his I, I mean, to a modern father, but I don't think that <laughs> I don't think that would have happened like that. You 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 mean you coming to me, um, and you want me to go against protocol? Um, and then in further detail, whenever uh, inheritance was given back then, this was the stipulation. When you got the inheritance, of course, the father has passed on. But the reason why you get the inheritance is so you can carry on the business to continue to perpetuate whatever the father has set up in place, whether that's land, um, whatever type of investments. And it's basically you carry on the family name. That's, how, that's, that's the same thing with us. We're we here now as believers. We're here carrying on the business. We, are, we do have an inheritance. But the inheritance is for us to carry on the father's business. So he, he knew all of this. But still, whatever he had going on with him, he felt like he could approach his father in that way. But look at your neighbor and say, we're still your father's child. So... <laughs> The younger son here is asking for his portion of goods, um, which this is the Greek word ausia, it's O-U-S-I-A, which is possessions of wealth. So in this request, 
there's a couple things that the son is doing. He's first, he's requesting the cash out of the family. Because if he's due land, he can't pick up, he can't pack that land in his backpack and walk off, right? If, if he had a business there, because we know later on that he's going to leave, if he had a business there, he can't pack the business because they didn't have internet back then. So he couldn't, he couldn't work from home or, or remote, from a remote location. He couldn't do that. So in essence, he was asking the cash out of the family to leave his position in the family because remember, when they got an inheritance back then, there was obligations and duties. You don't just get this inheritance and then you just get to go do what you want to do. No, it's going to be some responsibility that's along with it. So he was supposed to have responsibility along with it. So he was basically saying he wanted to cash out, leave his position in the family, and all future connections. Because he was like, hey, give me what's due to me. Give me the goods. And that word goods is like, I just want the tangent. I want the stuff. I don't want the responsibility. How many of us done been like that? How many can relate? You want, you want the good, but you don't want the responsibility. And that's where he was at. He wanted, he wanted the tangible stuff, but he didn't want the responsibility that came along with it. The other part, in essence, what he was saying is that he wanted to break all ties and relations from his family. So he was really, he was really on one. And I, I, I mean, I done been on one like that before. I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. I don't want nobody to tell me anything about doing it, and I just want to go and do it. So this is the place is where he's at. So I'm, sitting, I'm, I'm thinking about the father, like, you know, because I just, I couldn't imagine if Ethan coming at me like that and being able to, you know, keep a cool head, to be calm and collected. And, and maybe it was because the father had wisdom and maybe some insight of what was coming down the line, but I would have not responded the same way. It probably would have been a roundhouse, nunchucks or something would have been going on at that point. And it, was, it would have been no, no discussion going on. So we know that he was intoxicated with something that, you know, that, the, like I say, the old wine, he was intoxicated with, with something that it caused him in his mind to feel like, yeah, this is right what I'm saying, but bro, you're like way off over here yeah. in right field. Yeah. And we, we read the other way and you, you over here somewhere. Yeah. So another thing to note um, is that the father has said that he did it. And he said in, in, in verse 12 in the B part, it says, and he divided unto them his living. So he ended up, he did it. He went along with it. So already you see where the father is starting to go against the grain of tradition. He's going against the protocol of society. And that thing began to speak to me how God our father, how he go against the grain of tradition, how he goes against the grain of society. Even when we come to him in a way that's not correct, even when we come demanding things from him that, yeah, we might, if we, we might be do it, but there are conditions. And even when we come demanding something and not really wanting to have the conditions with it, but you're starting to see here this picture of the grace of the Father yeah. that is, is just amazing to me. Really, really it chin checked me for how I need to be with my children. Even though it, 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 it probably was a hard thing, but he had a level of love that it overrode all that stuff that when we get um, a little bit further down, um, that's going to be presented to him. So based on Deuteronomy, the firstborn son would have had a double portion, and then the younger son would have had a third. So even in splitting this up, and when we, when we get down there and talk about the second son, I mean, he had a double portion. He got a double portion and the son had a third. So now, now so the son, he's left, right? So now he done, and, and, and the, the text doesn't say it, but it infers that whatever he did once he gave him his stuff, because if he had land, keep in mind, he probably may, I don't know if they had a land deed or whatever happened, but he had to get rid of it. 
So he probably sold it off for a cheap price or something because he had to convert it into cash because it says when we get down, he went and blew his money. He went and blew it. Yeah. He can't blow the land. So even though the text doesn't say it, I think the fact that Luke put it in there, it caused us to look into the fact that, okay, he probably sold all the stuff. So now he got the money. Because how else would he be able to leave with the stuff? I mean, unless he had some, some jury or something like that. But it pretty much indicates that he sold off everything that he had. Now, who can relate to that? I can relate to that. You know, the thing that I, I call valuable because I wanted to go a particular path in my life at that particular juncture in time. So I basically just say the heck with all this stuff. And then I cash out and then I go out here and and get into whatever, especially once I got 18 and I felt like I had been deprived of some things of this life. And this is this is like the son now because he wanted to disassociate himself from the family, from the tradition. He basically didn't want anything to do with his culture. So he went to a whole nother place somewhere foreign and he probably stood out. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure when he got there, they they knew that, okay, who is who is this guy? Can we pull up uh Luke uh 15, uh, 13 and 14? I could pull it up. We got it up there. Okay, and it says and not many days after the younger son had gathered all get, son had gathered all together, and that's the part I want to talk about that all together. Um, when he gathered all together, that, that basically when you look at the, the, the etymology of that, it's saying that he, he sold everything. So when he gathered all together um, and took his journey into a far country, he didn't, he didn't go somewhere near, he went somewhere far, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, how many times we don't went out the way to get out the way where we don't went in another town where nobody don't know us so we can go live riotously. <laughs> so we can go, we, we don't do it, we don't do it close. You see, he didn't go to a close town. He went to a far town. So even though he was intoxicated, he still had a little bit of sense at the same time. So maybe he still had a little bit of conviction going on that he said, well, you know what? Let me just go over here. Let me go way over here and let me go do Or Maybe he heard about, because I know when I was out there, I heard about some things. Y'all yeah. ever heard about some things and you wanted to go and uh, check it out and see what was going on? So he heard about some things. So he went over to this other town, this, this far town, this far country. And he, he went um, like this, the modern times, he went and turned up. He turned it up a notch. Everything that he couldn't do, he, he did it on 1,000 in the other direction. So in verse, in verse 14, it says, And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. I'll get to the, little, the second part in a sec. But look at the timing of this thing. You go to this other country. You, you, you go all the way over here you know, with all your substance, and you got so much freedom that you blow all your substance and the the when how how coincidental is that to happen that when you when you all out you on zero boom here comes a famine you in a foreign land so these people they really have no obligation to you because you're not of them you done left you done cut ties you don't cut ties with your family, with the community, and maybe any any friends that you had. You don't cut ties with them, and even back then in the, in the Jewish culture, basically they had a ceremony when you when you left them. They had a ceremony like so long goodbye. So basically, you you gone. You excommunicated yourself, and now you coming into a place where it's a famine. Yeah. I know he probably was like. What in the world have I gotten myself into? How many of us have ever been there in life? I have. I go wiggle, wiggle my toes and, and everything. So he done spent all his money, and now he at a point 
um, where there's a famine, and he's really, he's really in a place of need now. And he is in so much of a need, <laughs> this, this, it, just, it just baffled me, you know, to see how far he, when he went out there, and, and, and when we mess up, we really do, we really mess up. Like, we mess up big time. We, when we put our foot in the, in the pile, we make sure it get up on the ankle, on the sock. Like, we really, we get deep in it. So he got deep in it, what he was into. So it's just like, man, it's like he, but, it's, and you know what? The father, I know it had to be hard for him because he probably already knew this was going to happen. Yeah. And you know how many times we go to God and we, we, we be feeling ourselves and you know what? He be like, okay. He got the permissive will because this, this is what you want to do. I, I'll allow it. So the father allowed it. And I just, I just was thinking about the father like he probably, well, this is what he want. And it's, I guess it's, it's a, a teaching lesson. And, and God, he, 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 he's willing to teach us. Even if we're not teachable at the moment, we we gonna learn. You what what the, what is it? You gonna learn? You gonna learn? Cause I'm gonna have to teach you. A life will have to teach us. So now he's at a point. Wow, he's learning something different now, and he he's he has no help, and he's at such a place of despair. Um, in verse 15, it says, "And when he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, he sent them into fields to feed swine." Paul's, Selah. Now, remember the culture that he came from. They didn't touch no swine. That was like, that was a big no-no. Swine? So, and it said, and 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field of swine. So that he was the person. So you got to even think about this person. He knew that this guy from wasn't, wasn't from around here. He probably could tell that he was Jewish. He knew where he came from. He was like, okay, maybe I could just get rid of him and go send him to do a job that I know that where he's from, they, they don't deal with that kind of stuff. And I remember being out there and being around some people. And one of the dudes, he's like, man, um, what? What you doing out here with us? You're not, you're not supposed to be out here with us. And it basically, like, he was telling me, like, you need to go on about your business, but he was kind of telling it in a way for me to think about it. So I think this is the same thing that this guy was doing. It's like, okay, yeah, well, I can, I can do something for you. You just got to go out here and work with the pigs. So you know he's bad off, but remember, he wanted to disconnect all ties. So even though he did separate himself from that, the teaching wasn't gone. I'm sure he was trained up in the way that he should go. And how many of us been trained up in the way that we should go, but we still go another way? So this is what you have happening with him. Even though he was trained this way, he still ended up going the way, and he know he shouldn't do it. So now he finds himself going against everything that he been taught, raised to do, and he's going against that. Say, say, say don't, don't drink the old wine. Tell yourself, I'm not going to drink the old wine. Because that brother, he was, he was drunk. But I bet you, you know, I bet you he sold up a little bit then. I, I, I remember what, when, when I used to partake in, in the elevation of the clouds and something, something come up, rub to you, and, and you'd be like, man, that blew my high. I'm sure at this point, <laughs> he spent all his money. It's a family here. Then he's like, man, I got to go get me a job. And then now this man want me to go work with some pigs. So I bet all that drunk probably was, <laughs> it probably was gone. Man, he probably had a wake-up call. But when we get a little bit, um, I'm going I'm to keep moving. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's like he put himself in this predicament. And, man, I, was, you know, I still was thinking about the father, how the father is just sitting back, being patient. Because the father, he had some means. Because he couldn't leave no inheritance without having no means. And he probably could have just went and sent somebody to go get him. But he had to sit back. And he had to be patient and let things run his course. And God does that with us. He, he let us get in the stuff. He let us fumble. He let us mess up. And he sit, he sit there and waits. Even though he can't intervene. But... 
he does it out of love and it, it, it's, it, it teaches us um, it, it really it really impresses on our brain and it really lets us know that the the results of our choices so I know it, it had to be kind of grueling for the father to sit there and let him go through it and I'm I'm really even though the text doesn't say it, I'm sure because of the the status that he had that somebody probably was reporting to him because yeah. I know when I was out there people I'm getting coffee well yeah they said that you out here doing I'm like how who who said what y'all don't even know you don't even know these people but I'm sure somebody was reporting back to him what was going on. So verse, uh, verse 16. So this after he done joint himself. So now you don't went and joint with some strangers. Some people that, that have, do not have your best interest in mind. And now you're doing something that you never would have done had you stayed within the realms of the confines of the covenant or the protection that you was already in. So verse 16, and he said, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. So he done got, now he done got knee deep in the stuff. Okay. He already, he's doing something that he never would be doing. He's going against everything that he had been taught. And now he's wanting to eat the stuff that the pigs eat. One thing I like to draw uh, to your attention that pigs have a totally different digestive system than what we have. So their diet, they can take some things that we as a human are not able to take. So think about how distraught he had to be to even want to eat something. Man, that brother had to have been hungry. Hangry, hungry. He was desperate. He was desperate to the fact that he wanted to put some into his body. It probably would have killed him. Yeah. He, his probably, he would not have been able to digest it because he don't have that kind of digestive system. How many times in life that we've been that person? Yeah. We want something because of whatever situation that we're in, and we know we're not even built for it. We can't even digest it. So think about how far gone he had to be to want to eat what the pigs were eating. So not only is he going against everything, he's not even supposed to be touching the pig. So now, in essence, he basically, in his mind, became a pig. How many times in life we done became something that we're not? Look at your neighbor and say, you still your father's child? So... He wanted to fill himself with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So this is, Luke put that in there. He said no man gave unto him because now think about it. If he was back where he was at in the community, they looked out for each other. But now he's in a place nobody knows him and all this stuff. So on top of the fact that he wanted to eat what the pigs would eat and he wouldn't even be able to digest it. I mean, his body just wasn't set up for that. And then on top of that, he's over there and he has no help. You know how we say as preachers, I can't get no help. So that's how he was right then and I can't get no help. So he needed some help bad. And verse 17, and it says, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? He's basically saying to himself, what kind of mess I done got myself into? Now, some people, when they read this, um, they feel like maybe that he was, he was repentant. And when I say repentant, I mean repenting that he was turning back to a different way. But he was repentant, but he was this kind of repentant. Lord, I done did this over and over again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. He wasn't repentant. He was actually sorry that he had made these decisions and now he done got himself into some stuff. A lot of people see it that he had a change of heart. 
No, no. This brother was like, man, I done, I done bleeped up. This is where he at right now. But the thing about God, and when we get into it, when we get down a little bit um, later with the father in the, in the interaction, even though we might not be truly repentant, the father is still there open waiting for us to come. How have we come back? Yeah. How have we come back? If I long, long as I get through that door, if I if I roll down the aisle or do a cartwheel, long as I make my way. So even though he he had his own little stuff going on on the inside, it was that he was making his way back. And sometimes God will let us go through all that stuff, and and, and, and what I call the, the reconditioning of our wine skin. He he take us through some stuff and to help reshape and remold us so we can make our way back. So. This now look, look now look at this. Now, some some say in verse eighteen. Can you put verse eighteen out there? Look, and he says, "I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee." So you may think that he had conviction on him, uh -huh. but you, let me tell you from a slickster, a former slickster. Let me say that, because I, I, I keep that man, I keep him, keep him buried. But let me tell you, if I'm a slickster, and sometimes, I, sometimes my, I, with my son, he, 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 Arise, he does it too. Go to my father, he, and will um, say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Yeah. So you may think that he had conviction. So, <laughs> so sometimes... My son, he will come to us, and maybe he have done something that he need to get corrected on, and then he'll say some things in expectation of this is what we want to hear. So this is what I think that the son was doing, that he was rehearsing how he was going to get back. I said, I'm going to just go and tell him, look. I will arise and go to my father. I mean, he's going to get up out the slop that he in. I'm going to go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now, some commentators say it's a reference to what Pharaoh said to Moses back in Exodus. Can you put Exodus um, 10 and 16? I forgot to put that one in there, Exodus 10 and 16, and we'll read that. I have it, um, Exodus 10 and 16, and it says, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So some of the commentators are saying that it's a, um, a paraphrase of what Pharaoh said to Moses. But we know in that context that Pharaoh wasn't godly sovereign. He wasn't. But he said it, <laughs> he said it because he thought that was the right thing to say. Yeah. So this is what I think that the, the son was doing. He was coming up with a plan so he can go and say something even though he wasn't truly repentant. Oh, my, my, my. And he, he had rehearsed it and he had to rehearse it because you got to think about it. He full of pride. So now he got to talk himself into it because he's like, you know, he got to go back because he's going to die if he don't go back. So, so now <laughs> he got this plan, and he says, and am no more worthy. This is the second part of his, his, his speech, his, his comeback speech. And no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So now he disassociated himself, and now he's willing to go back, not as a son. Now he want to go back as a servant. Yeah. This is a major problem that we deal with in the body of Christ with ourselves because Jesus Jesus came down through 42 generations and five dispensations of man I'm not at my clothes yet but he he came down and he came and demonstrated what it was to be a son yeah. we know that when he got baptized that the spirit came down on him like a dove he didn't say a dove flew out the sky I'm just just saying it came down on him like a dub and it rested on him. Then we heard the voice that said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. 
So because of Jesus, we, we now have the ability to be the sons of God. But we often find ourselves vacillating between being a servant and being a son, being a servant and being a son. So he was willing to give up his sonship because of the stuff that he had got himself into and to go back as a servant. That's a problem that we have. I've been there myself because I didn't have my natural daddy. Man, that thing, it, it bothered me. So I only felt like I could come to God as a servant. So you can see here in the text that he's a representation of what we go through in life. We are willing to, to make an exchange for what we have rights to that was already paid for by Jesus that we will, we will give it up because we might be in a bad situation. That wasn't in my notes, but I just, I just felt like I had needed to say that. So he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off. Listen, when he was a great way off, his father saw him. I thought about that because that's the detail that Luke put in there. How did the father see that he was a far way off if he was not sitting there anticipating for him to come back? So that should speak to us today, that even when we get way off, that the father is sitting right there. What does it say? He's sitting down high and he looked down low. He's sitting there. And he's anticipating. He's waiting for us from afar while we going through our speech in our head and all the stuff that we going through. He's sitting there and waiting for us. Look at somebody and say, you're still your father's child. So he arose and came into the father. We on verse 20. Okay. He arose and came to the father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Compassion. That's not just like, that's like a, boy, come here. I missed you. Could you imagine the embrace? The embrace that took place. Even though he was, the father was hurting, the love that he had, it it trumped the hurt that he had. That's how God is with us. Even though we might have did this and that, when we come back to him, he come back and embrace us. And he's not worrying about how nobody looking at him. Because keep in mind, he's going against protocol. Because a man of his, his stature and his age, first of all, he's just supposed to be walking. Secondly, after what his son had did him, humiliate him throughout the whole town because even though they have Facebook, I'm sure everybody was, was scrolling and they knew what had happened. But he didn't care about that because he was still his father's child. So he ran to him. So he don't broke protocol. He, he's looking foolish. Look, God will go against the protocol when we coming back to him. No matter, no matter if we coming back right or wrong, he will go out the way in order to receive us. Man, that thing blessed me, man. I was like, woo, that thing blessed me. That's for somebody right now. You, that's something you need to put that in your heart and, and keep that in your heart. That's for you. Woo. Oh. And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven. He's still going with his script. He might be, he, he might be now at this point. I give him this. Once the father had came to him, he, maybe he still had to go through with it, but maybe he really was really sorry then because the father came to him in a way that was unexpected. And that, I'm, I'm telling you, that happened with me. You know, I feel like when I go to God, that he's going to come at me this way, and then he come at me in a totally different way, and I'm like, I'm blown. And then, you know, it just, and so maybe he was, maybe he was broke down for real. So, Father, I have sinned against thee, and in thy sight, and I'm no more, no more worthy to be called thy son. The reason why he sinned, because he took that money, he took his possessions, he left his position. He left the responsibilities. So I'm just, I wanted to say all these cultural details to see how much of a betrayal that had taken place. I mean, he really, he betrayed his town. He betrayed his brother. 
the the mother, even though they didn't talk about the mother, I don't know if she was going on. He betrayed her. He betrayed all the people that he had built relationship with. But the father, <laughs> he just looking at him like, this my son. This my son. And that's how God looks at us when, when we take on Jesus. And not in, not in the male, female perspective, but that's my child. When he sees Jesus on us, he look at us and say, that's my child. No matter what we done did. No matter how much we done betrayed him and we betray him. The children of Israel, I think this is a picture of them. They betrayed him. Ten of the tribes, they went on their own way. So this is like a picture of them at the same time. But God still sent his only begotten son that he would be the firstborn of many. So that means that he sent Jesus in order to bring them back into the fold. And, and Jesus said, I have other sheep that is not of this fold. So God, he already knew. And, then, and through this story, it's just like, Jesus, well, you, you, Jesus you, you, big bro, you a real teacher. He's a real teacher. So, but the father, um, and he said, I sinned against heaven. Now, y'all remember the other part, um, the other part, he had another part he was supposed to say in there, and he, I think he couldn't get to it. He said, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. So was the brother walking around barefoot? So you know he was in a bad condition. But that's when that new wine had came. Put on that new robe. See, we able to be clothed in Jesus. And we be able to put on Jesus. And then we able to put on some shoes. It's like he just... He just welcomed him in a way, and he's not worrying about what nobody is saying. God not worrying about what nobody's saying when he's going to do what he's going to do for you. You know, we say what's for you is for you. That's, that's how God is. When it's for you, yeah, you might have went out here and went out on the limb, went out yonder and did all this and made your people shame. But when you come back to him, he's right there with open arms. He's giving you a new wardrobe. Yeah. Come on. Because he lost his identity, but when he came back, he got his identity back. He came, he came back wanting to be a servant, but he came back as a son. Look at your neighbor and say, you're still your father's child. Now, he said, and he said, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. So I think about the, the fatted cow. And I know it's something that they, this the cow that they, they were saving for a special occasion. But what you also see, the fatted cow that's getting killed in this is what the Pharisees was on. I don't know if y'all saw that. So the fatted cow that they kept feeding was that we teach the law and we're holier than thou. And Jesus you're hanging around sinners and hanging around publicans and all these other type of people. So that's the, that's the cow that they was. So that cow got slaughtered, too, at the same time. So and it's good to kill some sacred cows. So they killed the fatted cow both in, in both sense, both senses. The one that the father had prepared and the one that the Pharisees was trying to bring against Jesus. And he said, for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be married. See, they begin to celebrate. Now, you, you, you know, people say they have haters. Some people celebrate your downfall. Don't be that person. But they, they celebrated the fact that he was dead because he... He basically said, I don't want to have nothing to do with y'all. Yeah. So he was dead to them. And they were dead to him. But now he's back. He's alive again. Meaning that he's back in my life. That means that the relationship is back together. And we've done been like that with God. We, we be out in the desert, whatever. And then when we come back, it's like, whew, man, I sure miss this. I sure miss this. And God, that's how he is. He celebrates 
when we come back. They, they was married. Now, the they was married, but there's one person in here we got to talk about real quick. It says, uh, now his elder son was in the field. And he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dance, and he called one of the servants. We're on verse 26. And asked what these things meant. So this, this brother was, it seemed like he was clueless. Oh, he's oh, he trying to figure. He wasn't, you know what? He wasn't clueless. He wasn't, this is not how he thought it should have been going. That's what it's saying. He wasn't clueless. He'd be like, well, what, 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 what's, did I, he's like, you know, did I miss something? But I was just, I just was in the bathroom, and I come back, it's a party. So, so he was like, you know, he, so he ain't going to ask the dad. He asked the servants because, you know, the servants, they got the order. So he go ask the servants what's going on. And they said, and he said unto him, thy brother is come. Thy father has killed the fatted calf because he have received him safe and sound. Verse 28. And he was angry. He got some old wine in him. He intoxicated. He was angry. He got a double portion. He was angry. He's the oldest son. He was angry. And he would not go in. Now, I done been that person too. I done been the son and the other son. Because, oh, they, they was able to do this and that, and then they were just able to come back and get restored? What? And I'm sitting here, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing the ABCs and the one, two, threes, dotting my I's and crossing my T's? Um, hold on. <laughs> he was angry. I got a little angry with him. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> but he was angry, and he wouldn't go in. He's like, you know what? I ain't, I'm, I ain't going to be a part of this. How I many can relate? I'm, 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 I ain't celebrating with them. So he, he's really... He's affected right now. But look at your neighbor and say, you're still your father's child. But he was still his father's child. And we'll see and as I get ready to get to my clothes. Okay? I'm almost there, y'all. He was angry when going in. Now, he wouldn't go in, right? And the scripture says that, therefore, came his father out and entreated him. How many times when we neglect to go in, wow. but then God, he comes out and he come to us. Yeah. He might come by way of a servant. He might come by way of a dream. Yeah. You, 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 just, you might be watching a commercial, yeah. but he come, he'll come out. Because yeah. we won't go in, but he'll come out. Yeah. Come Lord have mercy. So, what we won't do, God will do. So, the father, another level of disrespect, right? Because this, this son, now he's acting out. He's disrespecting his father. So, really, it should, it should have been some, some laying on the hands going on. But this father... And I know this is a picture of the good father. This, this is a picture of him. If it ever was one in the scripture, this is a picture of the good father. He's like, okay. But he probably, he probably understood because, remember, this man was full of compassion. So he, he knew where he was coming from with it. He's like, okay, I'll just, let, me, let me just go out to him. You know, like when my, my two kids be fighting and, and then one did something, now you got, to go to, you got to go to this one. Okay, you done got this one straight. Now you got to go to the other one. So now he was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go bring the balance. So he went out to him. And he answered, and he answered in verse 29, answering, he said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Who that sound like? The Pharisees. So you got to look at the imagery here. All these years... I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. So I did everything that you told me to do. The Pharisees, right? So they thought they did everything that they told to do. Because we see, even though he was in compliance, right? But when this thing rose up in him, we knew that there was an element of the law that was not in place. 
which is why Jesus came to fulfill the law. And he said, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. In this scenario, the neighbor was his brother, and he didn't have that love. So we can see where we can be in compliance and keep the law and not have the compassion and we miss out on it, even though we following the law to the T. In this scenario, you can see why they would say that the letter would kill it. Because he followed the letter, and then he, he reported back. Okay, but at the same time, brother, you, you have some issues going on with your heart. So, neither I transgress at any time that commandment, and yet, you never gave me a kid. Which, is, that's, that's, a little, that's a little goat. And that I might make merry with my friends. And he's basically saying, you ain't give me no party. Come on. How many times we done? I done been like that. Like, well, oh, well, they ain't did that much. I mean, they, they went and messed up and came back. Well, just, I, ain't did, I ain't messed up like that. I ain't get no party. I ain't get no ice cream. No vegan ice cream. Because I like vegan ice cream. Nah, I ain't get no ice cream. <laughs> you know? So he's, he's reeling. I mean, he's reeling. And, but as soon as... This, thy son, listen to what he said, this, thy son, not my brother. Yeah. This, thy son, yeah. your, your child, <laughs> was come, which has devoured thy living with harlots. That has killed for him the fatted cow. So this is the Pharisees talking about, you know, this is how they talking with Jesus, that he hanging around with these people he shouldn't be hanging around with. So the son is basically re is a representation of the same thing. And then verse 31, it says, and he said unto him, son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. So he, he immediately knocked over that bottle of old wine and he brought in the new wine like, hey, everything I got is yours. You already got a double portion, then everything else because we got a relationship. And that's what Jesus was trying to to illustrate to the Pharisees. This is not just about the book and that law. This is about a relationship. And that's where the love comes into play. Because the law, following the law, it don't put you in no relationship. But when you have love and compassion, that, that will keep you in a relationship. So we see even the new wine that Jesus was presenting. You see it in the story that after all of this stuff, that, that brother was mad, and he was good where he was at. He was the older brother. It's like, why would he be jealous of the younger brother? So we got to take, take, take this away. Don't, don't compare, because there was a comparison going on. Don't compare. Don't, don't, don't celebrate when people down, have a downfall. Be cheerful when somebody is restored. Yeah. When somebody, it don't, it don't matter how you feel about them, what they might have done, celebrate. Cause that's the kingdom way. Yes. We kingdom citizens, yes. a royal priesthood, royal king, kingdom, royal. So we have to have a different mindset. Yes. And he says, it, it was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So what are we saying in layman's term? We, we might, I might do something that you might look at and you might not agree with it. You might do something and then vice versa. But at the end of the day, look at your neighbor and say, you're still your father's child. And as God's children, we have responsibility. We have inheritance. But along with the inheritance, we have the responsibility to continue to be a son not, not son, female, but to be a child. We still need to be a child, and we need to show those that are not been adopted yet how to be a child. So we, we have to model it. Even though we might go through some stuff, we might get out, on, get out the way and, and get lost, we still need to put ourselves back in, in the right standing as the sons and daughters of God. So that's, that's my close. That's my message. I hope that you were blessed. Um, we are getting ready to do the communion before, uh, before we do the communion. Um, I, just, I just sense, um, 
I don't know how, I can't say a minute mark, but maybe about 10 minutes ago, um, when, when we were talking about the father and how the son had came back, and you know, he said this little spiel, but the, the, em, the embrace, when, when we was talking about the embrace, I mean, I felt it for myself, but I really sensed it strong for someone. I don't know who it was in particular, but I just want to say that that embrace, hone on that, focus on that, meditate on that. I don't know what it is that you might have been out the way or, or whatever, but meditate on the embrace. Now, if, you, if it's you and you're willing to come up, I just want to pray with you. I just want to stand in agreement that that embrace, that you will not disassociate yourself with it, that you will not put yourself back into the mindset of a servant because you're still your father's child. I stand in agreement with you. If it's you online, uh, send us some type of communication because I, I sensed it real strong. It, it kind of it stopped me in my steps. But receive that embrace. It's not about what you, what you did, how far you went back. It's, it's not about that. It's what it is about that you're still your father's child and that God is here to restore you. You seen you seen in the story he he put on the robe and he put on this put on some shoes. You know the, your your feet represent the way that you don't win in life, the way that you don't walk. And your feet if it's uncovered, that's what happened. He covered them. If your feet if it's uncovered, you might have went into some things uncovered and you might still feel the effects of being uncovered that you felt like you was out there all alone. But God is here. He's here with open arms ready to embrace you. He's here ready to put that coat on you. He here ready to put some shoes on your feet to cover the way that you're walking. So if that's you online, send us some type of communication. But I just really sense that and just, just take that embrace that God's arm is open for you. And he's sitting there waiting for you to come back. And all you, like, like they say, you, you take a few steps. We see what the father did. He was making this step, but the father ran towards him. God is going to run towards you because he sees you coming in a direction. So he's already watching and he sees that you coming back. So he's just going to run to you and he's going to embrace you and he's going to restore you. And if that's you, report back to us, send us some type of, let us know. Just, just inform us of the testimony if you could do that.